implement A star in this three dimensional looking, it's really a two dimensional world, but it's a three dimensional looking world. Now, I better turn my audio off because there's audio on this, as you'll find out if you run it. And basically, it's a three dimensional looking world, but it's actually 2D. The, uh, Agents in it, we might call them, move in two-dimensional space. If we hover over them, you might see that a bit better. But it does have this nice 3D effect in it. So what's going on here? It's basically a bad guy chasing a good guy. And they're both pretty stupid. And they can get trapped in corners. They have some fairly simple algorithms. But depending on the layout of the maze, this chase can go on forever. When you reload, you get different mazes each time, a different layout. And some of these layouts have little traps in them, like cul-de-sacs. You see that one there, where the good guy could get trapped, or in that one, and it'd be game over if the bad guy can trap the good guy. It may happen. Nope, it's not happening right now. So your job is to use a star to make the bad guy more intelligent. So we're going to leave the good guy with his very simple brain that he has at the moment. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so game over. The good guy got trapped into one of these holes, and it's game over. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at the brain of the bad guy and turn it into an A star algorithm. And that should make him pretty unstoppable. He should uh, go directly to the good guy as fast as possible by the fastest possible route, and the good guy won't have a chance. He'll be harassed by the bad guy everywhere he goes until if the bad guy can actually finish off the game. What you need to do here is do A star in your head. You do A star, but you don't need to visualize it. So you do A star with all the squares in the world, but you don't have to actually visualize what you've searched and haven't searched. So the uh, the bad guy would be doing all that in their head on each time step because there's another difference as well between the two of them, which is that the goal here is static, whereas the goal here keeps moving about. The good guy is moving, so you have to recalculate the route to them. So each step, you do a little A star in your head to calculate the immediate next move you should make. And then on the next step, you have to do another A star to calculate again the move you'd make. And that, it may sound like that would take ages, but of course, it, it'll only take a fraction of a second. The other thing about this world that sh could divert you and try not to uh, get too diverted by it is that it doesn't use the P5 graphics library. You've got some nice graphics here. If I reload, we can drop the camera down so it's moving about with the agents on the ground. You can do all sorts of stuff with it. You can track them and zoom around in 3D space. So the thing about this world is that it doesn't use the P5 graphics library. It uses the 3JS graphics library. And I said earlier on when introducing Ancient Brain that 3JS tended to be more suited for more advanced graphics. So when you clone this one, and you edit your clone, as usual. You will discover various things in it that are connected to 3.js. Actually, we're not seeing any here at the moment. But further down, eventually, we will find, let me do a search for 3. Dot. So you see these things here, 3. Dot texture loader and so on. What's going on there is 3.js is loading up images to push onto these cubes. Which is nice. You can change those images if you want. Just change the file names and make your own version of the world with your own images painted onto these cubes. But when you see stuff like that in the code, and I do my intelligent code help, so I've just selected that there, and I do my intelligent code help, it takes me to the help files for 3.js.